TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it? Little warning screen just in case. Doubt that we'll need it, man. Don't forget, twitch.com is where we live it up at. Username's at the bottom of the screen, man. If you want to lock in, it's free. Uh, don't forget, we do got Patreon where we post five days a week. This is called Raw Blues. Pause. Uh, London's Metropolitan Police. I, we watched the first episode of this like a, a month ago, maybe more longer. Let me see what this is all about. The second episode, man. This is all right. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me. Turn the engine off. Take the keys. What do you want? Can you, just step Can you take the, the keys out of the ignition? No, please? I can't. At the Metropolitan Police Training School in Hendon, North London. Bro, if you're yeah, right, no way. Stop. Let's let's this let's really dissect this right now. This is a training camp, right? Okay. Imagine pulling up with that much aggression to a police officer telling you to stop. First of all, I wouldn't. You know what? Never mind. You you're already in trouble. The engine off. Take the hitting them with the door, then kicking her with the door. Keys. That's assault. I'm going to jail. My face is firmly planted against the concrete on the ground. Come on now. What do you want? Be realistic. Can you, just step Can you take the, the keys out of the ignition? No, I can't. At the Metropolitan Police Training School in Hendon, North oh, almost ran them over. London, a new intake of recruits are two weeks into their 18-week course. Today, they're getting a taste of some of the problems they'll face on the street. The vehicle has two male occupants. They've been acting suspiciously in a local car park. It's your job to stop the vehicle and speak to the driver and his passenger. Stop. We have age. No, no. Chemistry graduate Mike Walsh is teamed up with one of the youngest members of his class, 19-year-old David Morrie. OK, let's walk up to the, the top road here. That's all. Mike, you have a chemistry degree. Go be a scientist. Why, why do you want to be there do this? <laughs> Gentlemen, I've had information, had a report that you've been acting suspiciously in this car. This is bollocks. Do you mind stepping out of the car? And... Why? Because I'd like to speak to you. What do you mean? You want, what about what? Nothing to do with the fact that I was nicked last week, I suppose. Is it? What's the fact? It's ain't funny. Nice, sir. Well, why are you laughing then? Are you a clown? Nice, sir. Would you mind stepping out of the car, please? Right, Fed up with it. Both the passenger and driver. These ultimate rookies. These are, they are so green. Driver of the car are police instructors. With the recruit's performance recorded for later feedback, Sergeant Bergham is about to give David and Mike a lesson they're unlikely to forget. I ain't got to give you your details. Have I? What have I done? Why do you want my details? Can I take your name, please? No. You're freezing to give me your details, sir. Yeah, I am. What's your name, then? PC Mori. Good. As as You're both a couple of room. clowns, you two. Yeah, yes, we can you just tell me whose car it is? Is that your car? Put your finger over at me. Do you what? Don't you bloody stick right, your finger up at me. No, don't do it. Sorry about this. Bollocks, bollocks. I'm going. Bro, be real. If this was one of us, they would have. You're under arrest for breach of the peace. What you can say will be used against you in the court of law. Can you put. We're going to call it a van. Sit tight, right quick. Uh, let me finish reading you your rights. Then, uh, stop it. <laughs> Cut it out. This is how you know they knew. Is, it, is this your car? Uh, no, no, I'm talking right. to you. Oi, Noddy, I'm talking to you. Right, is this your car, sir? Hey? Is this your car? 
The recruits should be making sure they can see what both suspects are doing all the time. Can I just, can I just have your hey? name, please, sir? Hey? Can I have your name, please? My name? Yes, you please. want my name? You go... No, no, I'm not going to give you my name. Why, why have I got to give you my name? Because I just need to verify hey? it's your car, sir. Oh, have you? Have you? Can I just hey? take you? Can I just take your name? Can you give hey? me his name, please, sir? You can't. I'm no, going. I've had enough. I've had enough. OK, can you just come back with your papers, please? Or a couple of clowns. You're both dead. <laughs> I just... Right, let's just end the roll player there. Step on the footpath, please. OK. These are the worst bunch of trainees. Guys, guys, Point up. nothing personal, I can assure you. <laughs> but you are going to get an aggressive. Not, not, that was over the top. But you are going to get that, and you're going to have to handle that. I do apologise. But, but it's a valid lesson learned here, isn't it? Yeah. And you won't let that happen again. You've got to be in command. Yeah, like, come on now. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm on the other side, and I'm looking at y'all like, listen, you got to be more aggressive than that. They finna walk all over you. If this was me in this situation, I would've, what? Y'all too nice, man. But this would never happen in real life. There's no way they would ever pair two newbies together. They're, that doesn't even make sense. I'm Joel George with that, but okay. don't take it personally. We'll, we'll, you're probably seething underneath now. <laughs> you learn from it. Right. Didn't have a clue what we were doing. Didn't know what law we could use. Didn't know what our rights were. We didn't know what our powers of arrest were. Weren't watching. I got stabbed. He got well. He got slashed, and I got stabbed. Don't worry. Don't feel bad, bro. It's cops that are 15 years in that don't know none of the stuff you just don't know either. <laughs> Credit cards thrown on the floor. None of us saw. Didn't know what for. Didn't know whether they could take his keys or not. Didn't know. How to, just didn't have a bloody clue. Yeah. What? And I've I've taken a real dislike to you too. One by one, each member of the class pays the price for dropping their guard. See that? Nothing suspicious. No one's suspicious. <laughs> Sorry, you're dead. As my colleague has, colleague has explained to you. Harinder Babra has three years ex Bro is talking to him and he has his hand in his... ...experience as a part-time volunteer police officer in Yorkshire. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, no, no. Sorry, mate, sorry, mate. Touch me again, I'll have you up for assault. He already knows some of the basics. You are. Well, I can see sir. It's just a routine check. But even Harinder doesn't survive. Uh, <laughs> you bet. <laughs> You're dead, buddy. Seven bloody times! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in all of those, some of you did better than others, but in all of those, you were concentrating on the aggressive person. You cannot afford to drop your guard, because if you do, you may be seriously injured or dead. That makes your partners widows or widowers. For Jackie Breeze and Claire Keating, the lesson has had quite an impact. If I cry. I was sitting here and um, I took a few minutes out just to actually look out the window and just look at all those houses outside and thinking, you know, God, what, what am I going into? What am I going I think into? Before you come here, People say, you know, you'll, you'll have to come up against this, and you think, I can handle it, no yeah. problem. I feel like I've seen her in an a, a episode of Police Interceptors. But when you, you get here, it, it's a lot more scary. Yeah. This is just training camp. Wait until you hit those mean streets of London. into defensive stance. Okay. While they're at Hendon, the recruits are given lessons on how to protect themselves. Yeah, take hold of them. So those of you that were just standing there saying you're under arrest, yeah, when you're depriving someone of their liberty, we do actually physically take hold. Yeah, you're under arrest and you're not obliged to say anything, blah, 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 blah. That is the ordinary police hold. And remember, it is pain and rewards. And rewards okay? Pain compliance means that we reward good behaviour. OK, so then let his fingers go to Like the majority of instructors at Hendon, Tracy Axton is a serving police officer. What must the force be? Reasonable and necessary. Reasonable and necessary. Happy with that? Back in your lines, please! OK, we're getting insider information right now. Some people come here and they've never had any physical contact with someone at all and they've never dealt with any sort of confrontation before either 
Um, so it is important that they deal with that for the first time here. Left arm out, do not resist. <laughs> Stand still. It's not as severe as how it used to be when they used to have to put on a pair of boxing gloves and and hit someone and get hit for the first time in their life here. Uh, it's not as as, uh, as bad as that, but uh, certainly for a lot of people, it is a, a huge change for them. She looked like Ronda Rousey a little bit. Can I try on you, Ashley? It's not doing that way. Right, can they resist me? Before I came here. This is not a real representation of how a resist would be. If somebody's really resisting, First of all, it wouldn't just be with the right side of their body. They have another hand, and they have the up on the body weight, probably. Like, it wouldn't even, like, if somebody tried to grab my hand like this and I didn't want them to, then they wouldn't. It's as simple as that. You wouldn't be able to. Let's be realistic. I was really worried about the officer's safety. What are you training them for? You're not even training them for real. Like, stop. Do. Sounds really stupid, but you don't get these people hurt. I was actually worried about getting hurt, <laughs> which is really sad because we're going out on the streets. But it's actually the the best lesson I've had since I've been here, and I. They kicking. They they to, they teaching them how to kick people, kick people when they down. Really, really enjoyed it, and um, I'm surprised how easy it is if you get the right bits. <laughs> Up until six weeks ago, Craig Jones was working at a leisure centre in Manchester. People who look at police officers, all I thought was, yeah, you'll do a bit of self-defence and you'll take them down the neck and buckle them in, whatever you do. I am not coming in and striking. But a lot of the info they were giving you was really good because sometimes you just think you'd know what to do if someone attacked you. But the way they put it into perspective and they make you think there is actual rules to keeping yourself safe. Why are you kicking them? Stop them. Stop them, yeah, to stop forward momentum. You're stopping them coming any closer to you. You don't have to run to them to kick them. Is that defensive? No. It's not just a case of showing them how. What if my lateral speed is faster than theirs and they put that kick up and I'm already side swiped them and right next to them before they can even put their leg down? You know what I'm saying? How to use force on someone. They, you gotta teach them a counter move or something. Y'all teaching them the first line of defense. What about the counter and the counter it's for the counter? It's a case of making them think for themselves as to, you know, when they can use it and why they would use it. It's still very difficult for them, I think, until they experience it for themselves when they actually have to. That doesn't, that's never gonna work. What is this? I think until they experience it for themselves when they actually have to. He said, hi ya <laughs> What is that? To make that decision to strike someone with a baton, for example. But hopefully it's something that we put across to them that, you know, they are very accountable for whatever they do and that they must justify whatever they do. <laughs> the recruits have a lot to learn and That's the pace is relentless. Right? By Friday, most are keen to get away for the weekend. <laughs> They get to go back home for the weekend? Not without not with the performances that I just seen. They got to stay. They need some extra credit. Or something. It's gonna be the first time in two weeks now that I'm gonna to get to go home. So really looking forward to that. Can't wait basically. Alright, shut up, people, have a good weekend. You get up at six, breakfast six forty five, you're in the class for eight, you finish around four o'clock, you have your tea and then it's back to the books. And all you've got really is your room, you've got a television room. But it's, it's not the place to be on your own, is it? When you're feeling a bit down. Bro, shut. What are we doing? What are you even talking about? This is not jail. You are at training camp to be a police officer. You... So... Man up. Yeah, can't wait. Get home. Nice bit of cooking. Back to my bedroom. Ah, oh, Manchester. Drink orange water. Don't drink of orange. Oh, thank you. You're all right. It's great to be back in Manchester to hear all the Manc lads. It's brilliant. No more southern accents. See the family, see my mates. No more stress. No more stress for 48 hours. No more shaving for 48 hours. 
But to keep up with the work, the recruits have to study at the weekend. Craig's stepmother does what she can to help. I think it's probably the best thing he's ever done. I think it'll give him a good sense of direction. A sense of... Chic shine in his boots? Purpose. This weekend he seems a little more settled, a little more confident in himself. I think it was probably just a little bit of homesickness to start with. But I'm sure he will be fine. At Hendon, Mike Walsh is spending the weekend on his own. You're away all day, are you? Oh, all right. I thought, oh, I'd sort of planned watching the rugby with you, but if you're away all day, I'll just have to... I've sort of been having a couple of, of oh, thoughts yeah. about um, whether or not I am, I'm going to be as suited to the job as I thought I was. I think, I think I question too much, and I don't think I can form as readily as perhaps they would like. If it's 51, you look, you'll see there's nothing so, on so, it must be equipped with an interior yeah. rear view mirror and at least one exterior rear view mirror. I'm just worried, I just have my suspicions that my instructors look at me and think he he's, could be a spanner in the works. And if, that's, if that is the impression that I give at this early stage, then how is it going to affect my career 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line? It's the start of a new week and Craig, back from Manchester, is in for a surprise. Sergeant O'Leary has got some news for the class. OK, um, Craig has been selected as your class captain by the staff. been chosen because I think and the rest of the members of staff think that they will be a representative of the whole class. Class captain, big shock. Um, how can you say no really? I had this much good luck in ages so I suppose the times are changing. I might actually finish Hendon. Although they are leaders of the group in terms of team Bro was over the moon. <laughs> leaders and every single member of the team has was ecstatic about Hey, listen, any victories when you're trying to achieve something, any small victory is a victory still. Celebrate it. Important role to play. They do have some authority, and if they tell you to do something, regardless of whether you agree with it at that particular moment, they make the decision and you do what they tell you to do. If afterwards... To me, it was the fact that because I didn't get it, it made me think, what is it that I've not got? which has made them decide that they're not going to give me that position. As but you all have individual responsibility. So I just thought, sod it, I'll go and see Sergeant O'Leary. I didn't want to, I didn't want to... I didn't oh my God, you're one of these? You a teacher's pet? Like, you don't get, so because you don't get class leader, you going to the teacher and, and asking questions? Bro, you just didn't get it. It's not going to change anything. But maybe you want to know for your own record so you can do better. Now, but don't be in here jealous and salty. I didn't really want to talk about my problems, but I just thought if I don't, I'm going to end up, you know, I'm going to end up leaving. Mike um, comes from an environment where he's very used to, to speaking, very used to putting his opinions forward. I have too much to do, honestly. I'm, I'm not prepared to give up my evenings for drill. 20 minutes. No, I'm not, because I've got important stuff to do, and right. drill isn't important as well, far as well. I'm concerned. I think Mike was trying to do the right thing in bringing forward his opinions but there was something about him in the way that he delivered them which came across as quite challenging um, quite arrogant um, and I feel a responsibility to help him to change that she did give me a bit of a pep talk and said it's not a major problem but well if that's how you was acting Mike you know what I'm saying if you don't want to go the extra mile then who, why would they give you this why would they give you these accolades and these positions you don't even want to do extra extra work at night. The nerve of people, man. I swear to God, this will tick me off. Bro talking like he doing everything he can possible to be the best cop possible. Whoa, shut up. You're not trying hard enough. You ain't out here try hard like the rest of these police. It is something that it would help you if you could come across um, in certain situations in a slightly different way, it would benefit you and it perhaps would make other people feel more, more at ease. That for me is invaluable, so it would be surely in my own interest to, to listen to what she said. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, Jackie and Claire face a different hurdle. Tomorrow, they'll have to take the police fitness test. But actually, yeah. we're really worried about it. We're just so terrified that, that we don't want to build our hopes up. We don't want to fail and then burst into tears in front of the whole class. We're and uh, anyway, we? <laughs> I think we're going to cry if, if we do pass, aren't we? <laughs> just yeah. sheer relief. There's no um, distinguishing endurance levels between men and females. We have to do it as, as quick as the, the blokes. Yeah. But they seem to find it really easy. They, they all think... You know, they're not even worried. No. Hey, class. The warm-up then for the bleep test, the endurance test. As you know, it's from the blue line. The fitness test is run by Paul Buckle. By two blue cones, and then we'll go live with the bleep test itself. Three, two, one. Every recruit has to pass this test. If they fail, it could mean the end of their career. This is the speed at which it has to be done right here, and they're talking about all we have to do it at the same pace. This, this is slow motion. The fitness test has been designed to replicate the, the occupational side of policing. The endurance test measures an officer's stamina, aerobic capacity, and that's important because they could be involved in foot chases, they might have to climb stairs, or just walk in the beat. It's not like they're doing it very fast either. They're doing it very slow. You can control your breathing very easily at this pace. The recruits have to cross the hall 57 times, racing against an ever faster bleep. As they near the end, things oh, speeds up. Okay. are not going well for Jackie Breeze. Give up. Keep going, Jackie. And steady! And slow down and walk back to the blue line. Where's number where's number three? Jackie, you quit. It looks like there was two left and you quit. Number three was fine. Number three was okay. Number three! Yes, yeah, she passed, yeah. Number How she passed. She quit. She quit. Oh my god, we're giving out we're giving out ribbons for effort now. She quit. I seen her quit. And people did two more. She did not pass. A three. You did. The tape, you did. Jackie had just reached the minimum requirement before she'd stopped. But there are still two more tests to go. Stand by. Oh, there's a minimum requirement. Okay. So I guess it's, you don't got to do 57. There's a minimum. Probably 55. Go! Straight sprint to the right and around the blue. And all the speed and agility test is to prove that an officer can actually get to an incident quickly in a short space of time and also to be able to negotiate obstacles, for example, a pedestrian, parked car, telephone box, or quick change of direction. Okay, unfortunately, that was too slow. You scored 27.84. This time, Jackie has failed. To pass, the recruits must be able to finish in under 27.39 seconds. She wasn't that far off, though. She was off by 0.5 seconds. <laughs> 27. 27.34. Oh, on a dot. Oh, wow. You did it. <laughs> There's just one more part of the test to get through. Good. Oh, push-ups. But they look like they're elevated. Good. Claire has to perform... Oh my god, this is not even real. This is easy. ...form 20 press-ups, twice as many as some of the men. The test is designed to show that each recruit, regardless of their size, has the strength to push away an average person weighing 75 kilos. Now, I've got to stop you there. I've got to stop you there, number one. I just stopped you there. Unfortunately, you were four short, 16. Stop. You should have been doing push ups in your little room. You know what I'm saying? Now you know you gotta go do some push ups. By the end of the fitness test, four of the five women in the class have failed. We've got, now got a police warning. If we get two of those, our services can be dispensed of. We can get sacked, basically, um, which is ridiculous. Else, yeah, because Jackie failed by less than half a second. I failed by a couple of press-ups. But four, a couple is two. You failed by four. 
Because of that, we could now be thrown out of the service. You know what it is. It is what it is, baby. Commander Richard Cullen, who's in charge of training for the Metropolitan Police, is convinced. I would pass this 100%. I'm talking with minimal effort. The fitness test is both fair and necessary. What do you think of this morning? 20 push ups is light work, first and foremost. That agility test, 100% very easy. I'm very agile, always been agile. Uh, we did that in gym class in, uh, in high school. I scored top points, you know what I'm saying? They used to take it for like records and things of that nature. Tops. You know what I'm saying? I could I can do 25,000 push no, I'm tweet. I could do 50 push-ups right now nonstop. And that's easy. I'm selling myself short probably. You know what I'm saying? Now that 50 that 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 that, that 57, I could do that. I can also do that. They weren't running far either. It's easy. What police officers have to accept, that's male and female, is that violence doesn't discriminate. So a woman officer is as likely to be assaulted as her male colleague. And they actually need to be able to cope with that. They need to be able to understand why they need to be physically fit and physically strong. Now, I would disagree with that. Now, if we talking gang business, no, they're not. In any in any realm of the world, gang members respect women. They're supposed to. You know what I'm saying? Every time a woman is there, they just de-escalate. So now, women cop in America, for some reason, they be escalating the situation because they got to show their power by, I don't know what they be on. But, like, if you get some, like, crazy psychopaths, then, yeah. Everybody's fair game. And that's what the physical tests are designed for. Claire and Jackie will have to retake the test in six weeks. You did the bleep test in school and failed? Ricky in the chat did the bleep test <laughs> in school and failed. That's crazy, Rick. He fit and Come physically on, strong. And that's what the physical tests are designed for. Claire and Jackie will have to retake the test in six weeks. Now, I hope Claire and Jackie, during these six weeks, do push-ups every single night in their room. Every single day in their free time. You know what I'm saying? Do the little fake agility test every day in their room. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what's required. Go do it in your spare time. Again, when you're new to this game, you'll get the whole system right. How to point out the offense. How you stop the vehicle spoke to the driver but within a couple of days harinda bobra has got a far bigger problem with his fitness come in boys oh sorry for that i'll start on last what have you done playing football in the gym yesterday and um, got about an hour into the game and uh, as i went to sort of run for the ball uh, sam ran in front of me and uh, as i tried to go past him i uh, Tripped over his back legs. You haven't seen our doctor, I'll take over. Yeah, I've been to see the nurse this but morning. I, right. I want to be back in class tomorrow, no matter what. I mean, I've, I've already sort of like lost a day today. Well, I'll be going to the doctor. Hopefully, it won't be too long. The only problem that we do face if it goes beyond the week. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow when he goes. What's, like, what, was the, what was the verdict? To the doctor, yeah? Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thank if Harinda misses too much of the course, you'll have to start again. What was it, an ankle? Step back a bit in the car. You should be in cover <laughs> What are you going to be doing then, Craig? Covering you. Out on the training roads, the rest of the class are putting newly learned traffic theory into practice. Claire has been told to question a man sleeping in his car. What's funny, Claire? <laughs> Yes, officer. Sorry to bother you. Can we just have a chat? Yeah, sure. You just come on the paper. Does this mean I'm going to go to court? No, not at all. It just means you've got... The staff are concerned about the way Claire is dealing with the practical work at Hendon. Sorry, I need to take a minute. Okay. People eat her alive on the street if she giggled and was smiling and very, very soft and gentle with people. There comes a point where 
So, for instance, stop and search, where you've got to assert some sort of power, you've got to be able to do it and be seen to be doing it as well. And if she can't do that, then... No police officer rolls by themselves. You guys are always in pairs, right? Or am I, am I thinking of the wrong thing? Like... They don't never put a new person in by themselves. She will not make it as a police officer. From our point of view, you've got to start coming round. Steve Saville has decided it's a problem that needs to be addressed. Go over the point that if you were called to a pub fight or something like that, how would you respond? You don't have the luxury of saying, I don't want to do this because, because of whatever reason. Okay. I think it, it's just, I think it's just because it, it's in front of people I know, I now know. That's not a good enough excuse. See, I could foresee a problem with that on the street because all your colleagues you're going to work with, would you be yeah. afraid to do anything because you know them? Would you figure it out on the street? I don't know. You don't know? So th this is going to be a problem for us, is it? Or are we going to work on this? Yeah, we're going to work on that. Yeah. Once I know you... I absolutely hate roll plays. <laughs> At the end of last week, I actually wanted to resign um, because because of the role plays. Um, I find them really hard. Not not the actual thing. I, I've got the knowledge. Well, I, I believe I've got the knowledge. I just can't. I find it really difficult because I find it like play acting. As Claire and the rest of the class are about to find out, there are good reasons why they must be well prepared. All of these weapons have at some point been confiscated from people on the street and they've now been brought up here to use um, just to hide. Somebody has a nunchucks in the street? I like them and show them the sort of weapons that they will come across without a shadow of a doubt. I should imagine within their first week on the streets they will come across weapons such as this. Why would anyone want to carry that around the streets of London with them? I'm going to pass them around. To be able to arrest someone carrying one of these Recruits must be clear about the definitions of offensive weapons. Causing physical injury, that's not made for causing physical injury. That's made for cutting grass and bamboo and stuff. So that's intended for causing physical injury. Yeah. Bro, what are you talking about? If you see a, the man dim with this, you know what time it is. What are you even... So it's an offensive... Don't be naive, buddy. It's a weapon, but you've got to decide if it's made, adapted or intended. There's an awful lot of stuff out there that's now coming out onto the market where unless you actually examine these things, you'll never know that they are in fact offensive weapons it's... and knives. What some manufacturers have done, oh very nice, thank you very much, is they've produced two pens. It looks like two pens side by side and it is in fact a butterfly knife. Excuse that Yes. In America, that's not a thing. You can just, they, um, of course, they have those type of things, but you can just carry a knife. <laughs> Never seen anything like any of those weapons, really. Um, it's frightening that people go about with these kind of things. Um, you just can't understand the mentality behind them, really. At the end of the day, we could actually feel the brunt of them. And some of the weapons I've handled today. I don't fancy it with you boys. You know, you stop someone on the street, you know, some 16 year old, you think, oh, you know, half my size, you know, no problems there. Just stand there, turn your back on him. And what's he, what's he got in his pocket? Why would you turn your back on him? Because of his leg injury, Herinders returned home to spend a couple of days with his family in Leeds. Food? Food. Mm. Oh, no. I you missed Bro injured himself this bad where he gotta have a walker and a cane or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah I do you? miss home cooked food. It's not as good as home. I'm proud of him. He made his mind up. He going to do that job. He gonna be a policeman. So we are happy what he want to be. First I didn't want him to join the police. I was scared. Um, <laughs> on TV I watched Bill. Every week I see how policemen get hurt and a lot of people they don't like coloured uh, policemen. I think they were just a bit worried about that but y you know like I say I've, I've never found it difficult to get on with anybody from any race. You know, and at day I'm there for a reason, I'm there to do my job and if I'm doing my job right and I'm performing t to my best ability then I don't think anybody, anybody like that would worry me at all. At the moment, Harinder's biggest worry is that his injured leg might mean he'll have to join a later course. There. Right. OK. 
okay? Real tours no. ACL. You've got to put it into perspective. If you don't let that injury heal properly, you're not only looking at recourse, and you're looking at at the job, okay? So although it's everybody's nightmare getting recourse, and it's not even to say that it's going to happen, okay? You know, but let's cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. We'll, we'll just do the short term. Herinda's signed off for another day. Oh, I'm absolutely bad. gutted. Um, in a way, I'm a uh, relieved that I got my fitness test out of the This is a terrible angle. Like, why are we. Way, but this is something that's going to set me back. Nightmare, mate. Nightmare. Where can you search somebody? The rest of the class are learning about what powers they have to stop and search people on the street. So you're telling me bro can't come sit in on the classes? Street. You're not going to say, right, just for the hell of it, I'm looking for a weapon, you're coming down the station. In just recent years, the Met has faced a great deal of criticism from some of London's ethnic minorities over the use of these powers. Station to do this. What it means is we must use our skill of either persuasion, when you've run out of persuasion, at some point you've got to put hands on. How much force can you use? Reasonable. Reasonable. Only as much force to achieve your objective. It's actually vital that they get stop and search right, especially in the current climate with the McPherson report, the Lawrence inquiry, etc., etc. And the McPherson report and the Lawrence inquiry, yeah, yeah, for sure. The the feeling at the moment, how contentious stop and search is. One of the most vital things is getting your reasonable grounds correct. We do not have the power to just go out and cart blanche and randomly search who we like. We must have some objective basis do. that they are going to be carrying something. Could I um, ask you just to turn around, please? If you'd ask me. Yeah. Would you turn around, please, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Tia Lily would like comment. I'm gone. Subscribe too.